what we can do. Mm -hmm. Start off by telling me about, instead of going, you know, like you, we thought, oh, we'll go back years and you can talk about when you were a little girl and things like that, but it's not going to be too difficult. To figure they don't know me when I was a little no, girl. They, they don't want be, to know. You, you, don't, you don't fiddle with the microphone. Just hold, it, so, just hold it still like that. <laughs> just, hold, just hold it in one hand. You can get a grip of it properly if you want, and that's it. And so, instead of going back too far, just mm -hmm. t just tell me, you said when you first met my dad, what did you say you liked about him? I liked his voice. And when did you, when and where did you first meet him? What was the first time you ever saw him, do you remember? The first time I met him was at um, Savoy, dance hall. He had to dance with me, and I liked his friend really, better than I liked him. But, what was Oh, what is Frank Carl? I still see him. Well, I did see him till about 12 months since. He, he went to St. Tams and he got married again. I think he lives down Chatterton now. I've got a ticket, what do we call it? And he, and he was a Catholic too, like me. Yeah. And, uh, so that was an advantage. But Jack yeah, didn't want to go on with, with his dad. And he said that we, we used to have dance shoes then. He said, I won't give you dance shoes if you don't want to go home with me, so he walked me home. I have a good way of really, your dad, yeah. And um, we had a date like we used to do, to meet him again, and that's how it started. They were quite nice, really, then. You know, he used to like, he used to go. Then we'd go dance and then we'd go back to my mother's and have a brew, and she go to bed. And could say, you come up at um, about 10 minutes, you know. And she had a walking stick, she'd bang on the floor at the ceiling, you know, if uh, I didn't go to bed when she told me. Were we living at the time? On old lane. But I went with another lad one night, and I liked him as well. <laughs> how, many did, how many boyfriends did you have going at once? At once, well. <laughs> <laughs> Useless. And they were either chucking me or I was chucking them. It was worse when I was chucking them than chucking me. Mm. I went with with your dad. And then I went with, uh, you were called Harry Cochlin. And he didn't go to church, but I got him went to church. <coughs> I started meeting him on Wednesday at <coughs> St. Patrick's. Uh, then we'd go to benediction. But, uh, <coughs> and then. Yeah, I think he had somebody else too at the same time, but they were all very nice, you know. And uh, I met him at King Street store. I weren't going out with your dad then. I think he said, um, I don't know why. No, your dad never choked me. This must have been Richard Kidd <laughs> then that I was going with. <laughs> so Richard, he went to the same church as me. He was in the Air Force. And he was very nice, but he started going with my brothers for a drink. Then I think he decided he'd rather go with my brothers for, for a drink than seeing me. So then I kept on going with Harold. And then, <laughs> but to tell you all my boyfriends. If you want to. <laughs> and I went with, Is it all coming back to you with now? Tommy Nylon. Yeah. He was mad on me. Oh, yeah. They even wrote himself a letter as though it was from me asking him to go back with me. And I went mad when I found out. And they said, well, I felt as though people were laughing at me for keep asking you after you choked me, you know. So I pretended I'd asked him. Anyway, right. I got a nice girl nicer than me. And that's all I did, really, go dancing and clean for my mother, being at a proper time. So what... Uh, so what made you decide to marry Harold? Because he said he liked children, and I, I liked children, because I was Catholic and I was away from a big family. And um, he said he'd uh, do woodwork, and he got, he got a book and make things. Well, he worked at Delft, to, uh, Delft Tools, didn't know he worked at. What was it called? He used to come on to his dinner. He worked in Manchester, didn't he, at that time, I think? No, I don't work in Manchester. Do you work in Mazarin Flat, somewhere like that? Well, that would have been older ones, yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, he, he used to like him. He always dressed nice. 
I always paid a lot for his clothes. And then I went. That keen on his family. <laughs> <laughs> Just say like that. You but got a few on. They were very nice, but they weren't my type, no. you know. But um, never fell out with any of them. Try to, even though, even though. Can you stop this? You don't like me saying anything about religion, do you? Yeah, of course, you can say anything you want. Oh. I, want I want you to tell your story, not mine. Yeah. But, uh, and, and if religion's an important part of your life, then talk about well, religion. Uh, but yeah. the, the other thing that, that people are quite interested in, especially people from the Thorpe side of the family, is uh, people like his mother, Eva, mm. his dad, Joe, mm. Uh, who Annie. Is a, yeah, Annie, his sister. sister. Just tell me about Alice. what. Uh, tell me about who lived where, and uh, who you can remember at the time when you when you were first going out with your dad. Well, they all lived round about. I think it. You say, I think it is Auntie. This isn't Annie, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's Auntie uh, Annie. We married to Billy Neil. Yeah. And she had a boy and a girl, young Billy. Yeah. Well. I forgot what she would call the girl, Mary. And um, she was nice, Annie. I got on with her, she was really nice. And then he had another um, auntie, are we talking about aunties? aunties yeah. yeah. On his mother's side again. She was called Alice. They were called Jack, her husband. I didn't know them that well. And you see, I think she had, there were three sisters. One of them had Mavis. Mavis, what was their last name? Malin. Malin, yeah. And Alec Malin, he was a footballer, yeah. rugby player. And then he had a son and he was a rugby player as well, which I think he still is. And then Mary, I've mentioned Mary, haven't I? Mm. I think Paul was a bit of asleep. I've, I've <laughs> forgotten now, what, what was I saying? You were talking about uh, who, who of his of me, grandma's family you could remember. Oh, well, the woman... About the people who lived next door. Yeah, well, the woman next door, that were our own father's mother. That's not on, there's no light on. Should they no, be? No, it not matter then, oh. don't worry about that. It was his father's mother. They never introduced me to his father's mother. But I used to see her. Going in the back, they had a toilet between, I think there were two between four of them, but you know, that's how it was mm. years ago, a lot of old houses. And I used, <coughs> I used to see this little woman, and uh, I said to her once, Who is that? He said, It's my grandma. I said, well, Don't you bother about her? So I, I forget what he said. But she was ill. He told me when she was ill, I think she's cancer. Nearly sure she had cancer. And I said, um, I'm going in to see how she is. He didn't want me to do. Anyway, I went in. Well, I've never seen how it's like it. You want to know anybody lived there? there? A lot of them had slop storms then. I don't know whether we had or not. His mother had. And uh, she was in bed. She was only a handful. Felt really sorry for her. She said, I knew who you, who you were. I said, well, I didn't like coming. Nearly fell out really over that because I would have gone in and seen she were all right, but nobody seemed to bother about her. Mm. And they were only little girls, well, about Aaron and Kathleen. I think they were about 13 or 4, 15, something like that. I know they liked my clothes and they used to buy clothes like mine, you know, because they must have liked what I had been my made then. And um, I'm going off my tail, aren't I? It's all right, it doesn't matter. So oh, so his mother, she took his grandma, they took her away in an ambulance. Well, they said she liked to drink. She had throat cancer, that's why she liked to drink. And me and Harold went to see her. And um, she was bad then. And I said, would you like the priest? Because I knew, well, I had a rosary beads in, what did I have? Happy Death Cross that Harold's mother gave me afterward. But I said, you're a Catholic, aren't you? She said, yeah, I should be. I were in everything when I were young, you know. I said, would you like the priest? Because they were old and royal then, near the St. Patrick's Church. And she said, oh, they won't be like, they'd bother with throwbacks. 
and I kept thinking they want them at this side they like to get back in the church so I know we're annoyed by that I haven't interfered with anything like that so I just left it but my mother said you shouldn't take any notice you should do what you think's right it could have been a comfort to her you know somebody to talk to her especially when she was dying and that I don't know who was with her when she died but I know Annie and Kathy went to the funeral and they thought they were Princess Margaret and the other one, you know. Of course, they have this sense to know that. I, I feel too much, me, for people I don't really know. If I see them, I feel for them, you know, they're upset. Anyway, to get on to a more cheerful note. Yeah, you must uh, be going depressed <laughs> again. Yeah, you don't want to get depressed. When you... Uh, <laughs> So you met his family, you knew, you knew, I met you knew his family. family, that's a bit yeah. that you remember about, the, about yeah, his Yeah, they were always, na- they were nice with really. me. And what about his brothers and sisters, Jack and uh, Joe? And Jack, and, yeah. the, the Desmond were only a little boy, yeah. because on my wedding photo you can see him, yeah, just, yeah. they thought the world of him, they were always messing about with his hair. And they, they were both, Desmond were nice, and Jack were, like, were nice. And I remember Jack, he was in the Air Force <laughs> when I was married at first. And he used to come to my house when you were a baby and I asked him to take you to the barber's at the end of Bruton Road. He didn't know what he was in for because he cried and oh, carried on. Oh, was that a problem with having uh, Yeah, he waited going. And he said, I uh, stuck on my bed. You know, only small, you know, but he, he lovely blue eyes. And we're right, Bonnie lad. Yeah, I remember him being married and everything to what was she called? She called his wife. This is where I forget. Uh, I can't start Madge. Madge, Madge, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've had emails from her recently. From her? She's, yeah. she's still alive, yeah. Madge. Well, yeah. She's younger than me. Yeah. The mother. Yeah. And now yeah, she's she's imagine living in somewhere like Blackford. Yeah, they're living near Desmond, near Desmond in there. Yeah. 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 So you. Uh, they come to Kathleen's funeral. Uh, Madge didn't. No. Barbara and Des did, yeah. So when you when you were first married to my dad, we've talked about his family a little bit, what was going on in your family at the time? It was just after the war, wasn't it? Just after the war. So you must have got married just in 1950. Did you get married in 1950? So the war had been over for Well, my family then, during the war. Or just after? Just after the well, during the war, there were four of my brothers in the war. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Which ones? I would. I would. Uh, Jared were the longest. He was the tank regiment. You have to have a look in the Bible. And I would part with the military police. They were detested by by the soldiers. You know, because they were a policeman. I, you had a, a bike, motorbike. I was proud of him when I went down to they come and pick me up. That's just before the war, isn't it? And I were Tom, he were a gunner, which they let him be a gunner without that trigger finger, you know. And then I was poor Dennis, he was only 17. He was walking about the backyard with a brush over his shoulders. He thought that's what they were all about. And he was frightened of coming home on leave because he knew he did his, his deserted because he must, he must have been too upset. He was like me, he was very soft, you know. If you insulted him or anything, he'd come round and be nice, you know. Poor Dennis. So then, my mother were left with me, and I with Teresa, and they used to write to the lads a lot. I saved a lot of the letters, but your dad ripped them up. And um, saying, don't go out with anybody, you know. That during the war, and to we used to send them parcels, you know. So I don't know. I would Tom give me away when I was married, because my dad died when I was sixteen. You know that the only fell down the stairs, and um, we were all hard up then. You know, if you had a nice wedding, it wasn't like it is now. You know, you'd just have a a room with a pub, and we had the Cambridge, and. Uh, the piano. Somebody used to be able to play the piano in the guest, you know, in the sing song. I mean, then that's what we did, you know. Mm-hmm. I can't think now. I'm not going to tell you. 
You know, you know I had four, six children, don't you? <laughs> you <laughs> well, were the eldest. Children, you haven't had any children that I don't know about, have you? No. 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 <laughs> no, I was one of these that didn't have sex till I was married. <laughs> I had all these lads, and they're all decent lads. They didn't go with you for that. They weren't with you for friendship, mm. you know. Because mm. three of them, I, Eddie and that, that, that Irish lad, he wanted to get engaged. He had a letter in to his mother, you know, but I didn't want to get engaged. And I, I thought, well, I'd be about 18 then. But it's I, hard to get. Well, I don't really know who, who I liked, you know, they can be madly in love right away, mm. you know, but we used to go dancing and meet different lads, you know, and then a lad would go with us for a few times and, you, you know, you, you, you could have got married, but it was nicer then. Mm. You didn't just meet one and get married mm. to them, you, you uh, well, most of us, I went with a <laughs> fireman. And he went for <laughs> he went for two cups of tea. And he had them both in his hand, and I saw another lad. I, I think that was Richard Cady. I don't know. I was Harry Cochran, <laughs> and I left him, and I went home with this other lad, and he took me. I didn't taste a trace, but I didn't think I do now, but I didn't think at the time. A bit cruel, really, weren't you? Yeah, but people were cruel with me. Richard choked me three times. Really? Yeah. I choked Jack about, but not Jack. Tommy Marlin about three times. Then I married your dad to Sulker. It's <laughs> part my life. It's part of my life, sulking. Yeah. Turn, turn the mic a bit more towards yourself. Oh. You haven't switched it off, have you? I don't know, I've fiddled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's not half as good as you knew with your dad, is it? Yeah, your dad's just like gone off, you know. What? No. What's and I want to play it. Yeah. It's not on. Why? So I don't know. On. I don't know. You don't need both hands on the mic. Look, that's it. Just hold it like that. Just look natural. Uh, yeah, well... <laughs> look I natural. Mean, <laughs> I don't mind this at all. I can... Uh, I like going to the dentist. That, that, that video that you're talking about with my dad, I can sort that out. I've got copies of it. You don't need oh, to lose it from that. Uh, yeah, we've talked about... We talked about, you know, getting married to my dad and, and your brothers and sisters and his family at the time. But, and, and remember during the war when your brothers were in the army and things. Mm. But what do, you, what do you remember about before the war? Before, like in the 30s, so you'd be uh, sort of like between, well, you'd be just growing up when you're between being sort of six and 16. What were you, in the 30s, were, were you, what do you remember about your brothers and sisters at home then? How old would I been then? Well, you were born in 24, weren't you? So yeah. in 1934, you were 10. 10. Well, I remember when I think I'd be about 10. No, you know, I can remember when I was seven. Tell me seven about that. Seven or eight, and I remember my mother on Kingston Avenue. It was a nice house. It was a council house, but it was nice. And she always managed, you know, we had a lot of broth and take pies and meat puddings, things like that. But... It must have been hard for her, because our Mary was the eldest one, but she had a baby when she were two, when the dad when he was about three, and but he was always being left with my mother, and then she'd have a few words with my mother and go. So you know she was. I know it was. It was wrong for her the way the world were then. If you had a baby, she went in home then. Manchester, the nuns looked after her, after them, but they made them work. I think they were washing shirts or something for um, Navy, some, something like that, and cleaning and that. So I think it spoiled her life, really, because she didn't want to do anything then. She'd um, come home and upset my mother and then go, that's she was upset. And she, then she married Arthur Midgley. I remember my mother crying a lot then when we were little, you know. But did she, when she had that baby, I don't know anything about the father. But she worked in the, the pub and, and she got a lot of flattery, you see, when she was about 17. I think that's where she went wrong. So, that, so she used to make lots of, of bother, trouble, you know. But my dad was soft. He, he, would, he was lovely, my dad. 
I don't remember him shouting at me or anything. Only once. And I went mad, you know, because I weren't used to it. What did he shout at you for? Well, something and nothing, little things like it. I used to go in little cot and for a drink. And we used to go and meet what him. Was the, was, what was the real name of that pub, by the way? I think it would, they called it Little Cot, I don't know. Oh, there right. was a big cot and a little yeah, cot. Okay. We were down near Kingston Avenue yeah. where I lived. And we used to go and meet him. And they used to have toffee in his pocket and little packets of biscuits, you know. But he used to give my mother his money and she used to put it on the mantelpiece until he put added more to. They didn't give you packets then, no. wage packets. But I remember my mother telling me one of the lads went to take his dinner and uh, when they came out, so they said, my dad blew that whistle. And she said, I'll blow his whistle and I'll see him. <laughs> he was another gang, you see, my mother didn't know. So he'd get a lot more money than he said, you know. So now we're pat with a tricker. He used to pretend he was dead. I remember him, we must have been very young, putting jammer, wintergreen, something like that, as though he'd commit suicide when we come in from school. Because he'd only be about, well, say I'd be six, I would be, she wouldn't be eight. There weren't two years between us. Our Dennis were younger than me, he'd only be about four. I can imagine her not having patience when her Mary, the eldest one, like to help. Um, God, we're having a baby, you know, because my dad were upset and the lads were annoyed because they were getting older, you see. I remember the mill that we lived near and you could hear all the clogs and they were all going to the mill and the hooter, you know, the, the knocker up with a stick. And, yeah, I can remember all that. I came like Coops and Catherine Coops and uh, I don't know, I've never read Catherine Coops. And... It's all about birth. I remember my, my mother going to Ireland or Wales because they were in a, a home there, a nursing home or something. And it was nice, you know, they could go out and everything. It weren't for invalids. And, um, but I remember we had, we had a lot of butter beans when my mother went to work. My dad would cook a big pan of butter beans. And if he didn't want your dinner, he used to let me have the money, I think there'd be a penny. I'd only bought toffee with him. He didn't bother. That's why we thought it was so good. Because <laughs> he didn't bother about things, you know. Until he got older and then he'd, uh, he'd start doing a bit of his own washing and that. I don't know whether we fell out when that happened. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't have washers then, we had boil, set boilers, you know, dolly tubs, little things. So wasn't it a full time job that. doing the washing for the, all, all those children? Well, they used to take washing in, some of them that had all them children, all, a lot of children. But we had a neighbour and she had 11 like us. Oh, and I remember something funny when I were part, we were about 14 then. And I still lived down Kingston Avenue when I were only little. And he was working at a shop and he was making ice cream. And uh, he did it wrong. And I went to the shop and errand, you know. And he says, uh, Don't tell anybody, but they said I can give this away, but don't, don't tell Knoxes, because there's as many. And we were all running to the shop coming away with ice cream that was soft and we weren't there. Right. Uh, that, that was funny. So Think, think, go, go through your, your family and think of some funny stories that people might not be interested in. Everybody is on, on Facebook talking about Tom and about what oh, funny things. Really Tell me some funny things about Tom. Funny things. So point the mic a bit more towards yourself. Well, I, no, I remember so when Turn the mic a bit more towards yourself. I can't see any writing on it. Oh, I can. No, no, I've only just spotted no, that. Just turn it like that. Oh, I yeah. see. So you're talking into it. Yeah. Well, I remember oh. when he was. Oh, so you aren't a family. Well, Where's you? Well, I'll tell you about it. I would tell him again. Well. Back to Tom. I remember he, he had a lot of backache, you know. And um, this isn't funny, really. He admitted himself to hospital twice because his back used to drive him mad. And then now Marie went with him once to see um, the specialist. They won't let us in with him. And then the letter then to tell him, and he went out to tell us that he was a, uh, what was it? 
like a stupid man, he wouldn't wear um, a car set for his back and something else he wouldn't do. Anyway, you know, that were upsetting really, because he was sure that there was something up with him, which there was, he had cancer, hadn't he? Mm. And then I went with him again to uh, the doctors and um, uh, he couldn't get any, he couldn't get any satisfaction. And then he, he went to hospital and he thought that they were admitting him. This is before he went in hospital properly. And he said to me, and he said to me, don't let on that I'm going to hospital. Thought they'd all be worried, he say. Well, our part was worried. They went to see him at night. And oh, oh yes, he went to see him at night. In the meantime, they sent our Tom home again. And he was sure he'd have to stop and they'd do something for him. And I saw him coming across the meadows. And he used to go round years and years ago with a case selling door to door, you know, and mm. like they, they do cleaning, yeah. cleaning stuff and that. And I thought, and then I thought, it's that with Tom. So when he come in, he said, they sent me home again. Don't let on to anybody. I feel, you know, we were that bloody fool. I've told him I'll have them going in hospital. So I would part phoned while they were there. So he said, I'll sleep here and I'll just check. <laughs> and now Pat said, do you know anything about Tom? <laughs> I said, it's Pat and he's like this, here Tom Wynn. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? I said, I'll have to tell him. I said, he's here, but he didn't keep me then. So he swore. He said, I've been trying to find out which ward he was and went to hospital. I said, well, he were upset, he didn't want you to know. But it was funny, really, we didn't want anybody to know no. that he were in hospital, you know. What's the, what's the earliest you remember about Tom as a brother? When you... As a brother when I were a little girl. Mm -hmm. You see, things come back to you afterwards. I know he went to Ireland with my dad, that was the only time my dad went. I don't know whether that were during the war, because he, <coughs> when they came home, they'd got um, serviettes and that, and towels, I don't know, they were, well, they were pinned to the vest, so they could bring something back from Ireland, and I don't think that was allowed then, you know, during the war. I well remember things. You were evacuated to Ireland, weren't you? I went for about six months with our dentist, and I would tell the war hadn't, yeah, the war had broke out, our Tom mustn't have been in the war. We went to Ireland with our, um, could it be me and, and, and Dennis and Gerard? Well, there were a lot of talk about the war, and our Gerard said, I'll have to, uh, I'll be the first to have to join up in the territorials. And they were all trying to get him to stop in Ireland, you know, because he got on with everybody. And they were very young, you know. Well, they used to sing south of the border, and then uh, what will you do, love? And you answer, woman, and uh, you know, uh, everybody liked him in Ireland. Me, my cousin, me in Ireland. She, she always had a good laugh with him. So everybody liked her with Tom. He used to go to Ireland on his own, you know. He'd just ring you and say, "Don't worry, I'm going to Ireland," just like that. And he, he could, it with you know, he could have gone any time. It used do like he did at home, wander about, mm. went for a drink where he wanted. Mm. That was Dennis and John. John were nice with him, you know. Mm. Well, so going back, going, back so to going back to the war I broke out, so we went back home, and it were a couple of days after war we declared, and my mother said, I want you to go back to Ireland until the war's over. So I went on to cause the Manchester and um, asked somebody to put us off because the, the train went right to Holyhead and they must have phoned Tommy McGrath or James, one of them. I think it was Tommy to meet us. And um, we went for six months, me and Harry Dennis. I, would, I, would, I can see Harry Tom now looking after us because they'd be upset, you know, and men don't show it. They show it more now than they used to do, you know. And I liked in Ireland, but I missed my mother and my family. Missed that with Tom a lot. 
I remember when, when we went home anyway after six months. My Aunt Bridget were lovely, and my, my Uncle Michael. He was wife, I went back, I'd forgot something. And I went back, we set out to go home that. And then she never cried or anything. She was crying and he was crying, Uncle Michael. They just treated her as though we were the children. Did they have children of their own? Well, yeah, Tommy. Yeah. Tommy were grown up then. And the, no, the, 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 the family that you stayed with was who? Tommy. Tommy and? And um, May. May. And did they have and children of their own? But, um, now I don't think Tom had, and there was another one called Billy. He lived lower down, they were married to Bridie, she was called, and they had about six or seven children. Oh, in, whereabouts was this in Tune? In Tune. In Tune, sorry. And one of the, when they both died, they were one of the uh, nephews, because Billy had died then. He worked in the sugar factory, beet factory, one of the sons. So Michael, the grandson he had kept in the council house then. And it's all changed now. But they had a tough fire when I went <coughs> during the war. And the toilet were outside and he'd had another room built and toilets and everything. But we didn't stop there. I mean, I would have liked to have done, but I with Dennis were very nice, but he took all the conversation over. So we couldn't really... What line was this when you went in? When we went back to When Ireland. you went back, so you're not talking about when you were evacuated to Ireland, um, no. you're yeah. talking about when you went back much later? Yeah, it, it must have been, yeah. So, so who's left in uh, in, uh, in Ireland? In Tume now. In Tume now. I've got cramp there. You can move, um, you don't have to sit dead still. I, get, I got out of bed with cramp this morning. What were we going to say? Well, they had a few children. They had Kathleen that came over from Ireland and she worked in the mill, winding. She hated the country. But she got money to send back home. And uh, then there were May, Maeve. Now, what was she called? Ina. She wrote that book. Did you ever see it? No. Are you sure? What, wrote, a, a, wrote a short story? Yeah, about herself. And she, she used to live with, what did they call Muddy, they used to yeah, call I've that. Seen that yeah. Yeah, well, I've still got that. And we've got a picture of her, haven't we? The, yeah, like yeah. a picture. And, yeah, well, I've got a picture of the three of them outside their house, little girl. But she lived then, when they had a few children, the grandma took the, the eldest one along. Yeah. So she so she lived there. I was like with Maisie, I don't know whether she... May. You know, May worked for uh, one of the Rolling Stones cleaning for him. Well, Mick Jagger went and stayed Mick with Jagger. Her, didn't he? And when think, he was going out with Marion Faithful. I think he cre he cleaned us she cleaned us something. Right, yeah. They had a place there, didn't they? Yeah, she'd come to her house with me. She went now, she I never got married. Well, she still had that letter, because she had a letter from Mick and Marianne, didn't she? Oh, said thanks. Yeah. yeah. That'd be worth a bloody fortune now, that. Yeah. So I remember a lot, don't I? Things come in your mind, don't they? Do you, you know what I think we should do, just to give, give you a break and, and so that... I remember he's coming at one o'clock. Yeah, so well, what we'll do, just have a quick look at the uh, family entries in that Bible and see what you can remember about... About, about everybody. About, about everybody. So it's just, very heavy. Yeah, well, I'll come and sit with you. For now. I'm just taking the dog out. You don't know what... Is it dusty? I don't know, oh, don't know, know what's, what's in there. I could do with looking at... Well, this this is the interesting bit, isn't it? Let me let me hold the mic. I can't tell any glasses anywhere. Well, I'll tell you what it says in here, and you can tell me what you think about what it, what it says. This is all all about the history of the family, mm -hmm. and this book originally you hold the mic yeah. for a tick. The uh, the book originally was given to me, wasn't it? Yeah. In 1961, it says presented to Paul Thorpe from his nan. God bless you and keep you, November 6, 1961. Nice so, I was, that, so I was 10 then. Yeah. So that's 47 years ago. Mm. So we look at, the, look at the history at the back and it says who's got the uh, marriages. Yeah. And it starts off with William McGrath and Elizabeth Ingram. My mum and dad. Yeah. Married on the 10th of October, two, uh, 1903. Yeah, I'll hold the mic. Married... Nice. In 1903 at St. Patrick's Oldham, the best man and the bridesmaid 
were Henry Ingram. Mm. So who was that? Her granddad. Her dad. Dad. Ellen Con- Connell. That's her mother. Elizabeth's mother was called Connell, Ellen Connell. Yeah, she must have been. Mm, that, that's interesting. That will give Facebook people another name to start searching for. Well, it's Nellie uh, Connell, you know, nearly 100. And she could remember things, you know, when I used to visit her, but she can't now. She married my granddad after. Uh, um, no, she, she died, didn't she? I, I, well, yeah, probably. she died. But my grandma, and he married again. Right. She was called Connell. And the groom's parents, that's William's parents, were with, was another William McGrath oh, and oh, Mary yeah. Turner. Yeah. And the bridegroom's, uh, the bride's parents were Henry Ingram and Elizabeth Hart. Yeah. So that's another name. Yeah. yeah, we have relations there, I don't know where they are. Yeah, Remember. that's interesting. So, yeah. and, and then the children that they had... It's all fed in a way, man. No, well, it's all right. That's why it's important that we, that we talk about it, because... You know, if, if, the, if the thing's ever lost. The children were Mary, born on the 29th of January, mm. 1904. James, born, born on the 17th of August, 1906, known as Jim. Mm. Kathleen, born on the 11th of December, 1908. William, Uncle Bill, mm. born 22nd of the 6th, 1910. Tom, 19th of August, ni- 1913. Frank, born on the 4th of the July, 1915. John, why does it say John? I was part John Patrick. All oh, right. So Pat, born 1st of March, 1918. Yeah. Jared, born on the 21st of September, 1920. Theresa, born on the 14th of March, 1922. Maria, that's you, isn't it, Marie Winifred? Mm. Born on the 13th of January, 1924. And Dennis, born on the 2nd of April, 1926. So there are 15 months between me and Dennis. Yeah. And she had great stones down all them children. I know, well. And Peter said he'd see to that. I hope he's reading it. Okay, note for Peter. So I'd have the gravestone. Yeah, I said we'd all give 100, but I don't know now things are so bad I could give 100 to us. It's only one standing up. Right, okay. I'll read it, Peter. (laughs) (laughs) Keep it light, stop getting too serious. So, so there were children being born for 22 years. Yeah, poor mother. No wonder she looks stressed. These are all histories of baptisms. Yeah. Uh, They're all disappearing. Can I go to the toilet? Because you're doing this, aren't you? No, you've got to be... You, oh, I, I need to be then. asking you about it. If you oh, want yes, to go on. We'll pause while you do that. Do you want me to pause? Yeah, pause. Right. These cushions aren't comfy. I could do some new cushions for that truck and these, are you? Cats. Hold that for a sec. Right. OK, so... OK. I'll hold the mic. Oh, I'm going to just no, you can, well, well, I've, I've turned it, I've changed it now so that you can actually see it. So you can see it. Okay. How, how come you can see all the way over there and you can't see what it says here? Because. I'm not sure it's sighted. Just all that. Are you ready? Right. So these are all baptisms. Yeah. Uh, we won't go through them. Did you? Everybody was baptised, weren't they? We were all baptised. And they all had first communions. Yeah. And they were all had confirmations. Yeah. And then some of them got married. Yeah. We got James marrying Nora Macaulay. Yeah. And uh, at Altrincham, Cheshire. Yeah, we were married at Corpus Christi. Well, it says here, we're married. Oh, Mer- no, St Mer- Mary's, Mary's Parish. Oh, sorry, this is, I'm saying this is wrong. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. J- Jim married yeah. Nora yeah. at Corpus Christi Church. That's it. The best That's man it, yeah. and maid of honour were Bill and Anne Macaulay. Yeah. Mary McGrath and Arthur Midgley were married in Altrincham, Cheshire. Yeah. Catherine McGrath and Thomas Gorey were married at Corpus Christi. Yeah. William McGrath and Mary McCormick were married at St Mary's Church. That's it. Tom McGrath and Kathleen McCormick were they, were, were, they, were they witnesses? Yeah, best yeah. man and mum. Winnie married Harold at Corpus Christi Church. The best man 
with Rita, uh, the best man and maid of honour were Rita Gorey and Fred Turner. Yeah. Frank married Grace at Corpus Christi. The best man was John Buckley and... Jared doesn't say who the, no, it doesn't say who the other person was. No, I bet it's Jared. No, oh, possibly, yeah. Jared married Sheila Cronin yeah. at Corpus Christi. Yeah. John Curley and Winifred McGraw were the maid of honour and best man. Yeah. Pat married Gemma Santini. Yeah. In Venice, Italy. Yeah, Italiana. Uh, Teresa married Clifford Hoyle mm. at Corpus Christi, maid of honour and was uh, you. Yeah. And uh, best man was Eric Hoyle. Yeah. Dennis married Joan Hammond at Donkey mm. Church. The best yeah. man and bridesmaids were Tom McGrath, who else? And Moira Hammond. Yeah. No got, nobody entered no, the pra- any, nobody entered religious no, no, life. I, pr- I thought when I had you, I thought you thought I was going to be the I, one. I'm not praying. Have I been a big it's disappointment the, to you? Yeah, I'm parents were not. I prayed that you'd be a priest. Yeah. And you used to do it on the stairs, didn't you? When they all we all sat they all sat on the stairs and you used to give them communion. Yeah, that was I asked Father Aragon would it right, and he said, "Oh yes, don't so discourage it." It was just a power trip. Go on, carry on, regard. Uh, so, now we've got the people who died. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, a, a bit, it's a bit, bit sad to, to be going through all these details, but we know the ones that have died, don't we? Yeah, your father, Bill, Bill, Elizabeth, your mother, Jim, Frank, yeah. Jared, yeah, Gr- yeah. Grace, Tom, Kathleen, Pat and Gemma. Yeah. Bill, Elizabeth, James, Frank, Jared, Grace, Mary, Kathleen. Why, is it, why are they on both pages? I don't know, perhaps I did. Oh, I've got a page for last or... anointing and a, and a page for yeah. that. I'm more interested in these military histories, even though I'm not a military person myself, I'm quite interested in what, in the, the, the history of what happened between 1939 and 1947-ish. Mm. So we've got uh, John Patrick McGrath, yeah. that's Uncle Pat. Yeah. He was in the Royal Corps Military Police from 1939 to 1947. That's quite a long time, actually, isn't it? Mm-hmm. He was promoted to uh, what it says mm. W.S. Corporal. Well, I don't know what that means. I don't. In the British, uh, and he was sta- stationed with the British Expeditionary Corps. Yeah. Gerard was in the army from 1939 to December 45. Stationed at M- M- MEF. I don't know what that He served in Libya, Egypt, Burma, Assam, India, Persia, Iran, and was got uh, his awards with the Burma Star and the Africa Star. Tom McGraw was in the Royal Artillery from 43 to 47. So you were right, at the beginning of the war, he wasn't actually no. in, was he? No. He was a gunner driver, stationed at BLA. Don't know what that means. No, British. Some, somebody will know. know. Land Army. He was co- uh, he, he saw active combat in France, Belgium, Holland and Germany. And he's received awards in France, the France and Germany star. Dennis McGraw was in the Royal Ulster Rifles. From 1942 to 1946, stationed at Omar. Uh, that's interesting. He's served uh, combat duty in France, Belgium, Holland, Germany, Egypt, and Palestine. Oh, damn it. And the awards he received with France and Germany Star 1939 to 45 and Palestine Service Medal. So mm-hmm. that's quite an interesting thing for the for the relatives of the of those particular yeah, it's brothers, children, and, children, children and, and grandchildren and great grandchildren yeah. have been yeah. interested. Well, that's the one that um, is there anything else in them that's the bank somewhere in the fort? I don't know what. I don't know. This is the sort, this, this is the sort of book that people will sort of stuff little bits and clippings in, isn't it? So yeah. we've got. I might have. I have a feeling I've got them all in envelope. <laughs> we've got. Mm. Uh, Martin's First Communion. John and Angie would like to announce the safe arrival of the beautiful little girl, Ella. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Where's that from? It's a card to you from Dead Dead April and Family. On your birthday. We don't want your birthday. A leaf? Yeah, they used to always press leaves. I don't know why. Who's that? And this is Do you want more? Winnie. You have been enrolled by the Franciscan Missionary Union to enjoy its spiritual She's benefits. This is from Joan. She still doesn't spell Winnie like that. No, well, don't worry about it. That's and the priest, isn't it? Yeah, that's Irish. I can't read it. Yeah. 
So there's lots that's of other things in your boxes. That's all there is in there. Yeah, like I said. So it's all we've got as a bit of a family sort yeah, of document. Yeah, I've got it. I've got all the um, where they died, and you know, the, I've cut out of the paper and put them in an envelope. You know. Well, what we'll do another time is. Not necessarily with no, the camera. Not, never. not now, because we've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll go through your photographs again, I because now I've, I've now I've met not lots of new new relatives yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. They're, they're asking me if we've got pictures of such a body. I never it never occurred I've to me before box, that anybody. I think. Been, I don't want to have another box. Been, ever. Well, we'll have a look after. We'll find the boxes. I'll take them home and scan any that yeah. that I haven't already scanned. And yeah. then I can post them on on Facebook for people to see. Yeah, I have some nice ones in in al the albums. You know, weddings, Marie and Trisha. And so Catherine, I suppose. So now you can say goodbye to your Facebook friends. Goodbye. Look at the camera. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>